Hi everybody, it's Chance Darling again. Today we're going to uh, be installing our coil spring conversion kit. It's made to fit the 98 later big twins, whether it's a cable or hydraulic, two different part numbers, but same basic idea. Um, it's pretty straightforward install, just kind of give you some tips and hopefully make it a little bit easier, answer some questions for you, whatever might, might be the case. So uh, here we go. Okay, this is our coil spring conversion kit. This particular kit is for the 98 and later big twins. Uh, this kit does not fit the assist and slip clutches from Harley. Um, it, it's got a, a three, three spring inner hub, so it's a totally different design. But this will fit cable or hydraulic. It's a different part number for the hydraulic because there's a bearing in the pressure plate instead of the adjuster. But other than that, it still works the same. Um, you get the billet aluminum pressure plate. You get two different sets of coil springs, kind of a light and a heavier duty spring. You get the six bolts and a retaining plate that bolts everything together to the inner hub. On the coil springs, um, the gold ones are 58 pounds, and there's a, another set that are black with a green stripe. Those are gonna be 68 pounds, so those are gonna be for the higher horsepower engines. Uh, with the stiffer spring, the pull is going to be a little bit heavier, so the lever will be harder to pull, obviously. And then you get a bill of materials and you get some basic instructions, tells you how to bolt everything on, got your torque specs and, and the different idea with the springs as well. All right, so as you can see, we got the primary cover off already. Um, as always, refer to your owner's your service manual, remove the primary cover. Depending on what bike you're working on, you're gonna have to remove the floorboard, shifter, shift linkage, whatever. I mean, the Dyna's fairly, fairly straightforward. The little foot peg mount and shifter and cover comes right off. Unhook your negative cable, that way you're, you're safe in case somebody comes and hits the button or whatever. Uh, it's pretty pretty straightforward install, but we're just gonna remove the, the retainer, the bolts here, are gonna loosen up. We've gotta reuse the push rod adjuster. So you wanna take that out. I'm gonna remove these bolts and then basically just remove the pressure plate. And then our, our bill of aluminum pressure plate goes on with the coil springs and tighten up the bolts and readjust the push rod and you'll be good to go. So basically the first thing we're gonna do is uh, go to the clutch cable and we wanna shorten the cable adjuster all the way. And then we're gonna loosen up the, the push rod adjuster. So basically on the, on, the, on the Dyna, you just pop this little clip off and then you lift up the boot and grab your wrench. And then you want to just loosen up the jam nut. And then collapse the adjuster down all the way. So basically what this is gonna do, it's gonna give you all free play up at the lever. So we got the cable adjuster collapsed all the way and got all the free play up at the lever. So now you want to come back to the push rod the adjuster and you basically want to loosen up the jam nut and you want to take the push rod adjuster all the way out because um, we're going to actually reuse that into our pressure plate so you can just set it there for right now now you want to remove we remove the six bolts to holding the retainer ring on the diaphragm spring pressure plate and you want to just kind of loosen loosen them up each one and you want to go in a crisscross star pattern, kind of like the wheel on your car, so you don't warp something or bend a plate or whatever. Uh, you can see there is spring pressure here, so you just want to go a little bit at a time, kind of work it off. And then at some point you get to the end of the, the travel on the spring and they'll be all nice and free and come right off. In there, you just I kind of like starting at the bottom and get them out of the way. You're not going to reuse any of these pieces, so you can just set them aside. Um, our pressure plate comes with a new retaining, new retainer, and coil springs instead of this diaphragm spring and new bolts. So you can just push, put everything aside. I just kind of hold it in, make sure otherwise everything's just going to fall out and go all over. So you got your retainer, you got your diaphragm spring, which we're not gonna be using anymore. Then you get the cast aluminum pressure plate. That's gonna come off, but kinda wanna put a finger on the top plate so that way you don't pull all your plates out at the same time. And like I said, just put this stuff aside. You're not gonna, the only thing you reuse is the push rod adjuster. 
So when you're at this point, you might want to pull your clutch plates out, kind of inspect them, measure them, make sure everything looks good there because you're already here. So um, once you know your plates are good, put everything back in there, grab our pressure plate, and then you put the push rod adjuster in there, kind of run it in a little bit so that way it doesn't fall out or anything. And then basically just put it back together kind of the same way you took the other one off. It just, I mean, obviously the standoffs come through the holes and the push rod adjuster goes onto the push rod. So you feel it, it just kind of pops in there. And you just want to, you want to wiggle it around. You don't want to make sure it's all the way against the plates. Make sure there's no gap because you can put it like that and you can see everything moves, then it's not going to work. So you want to make sure it pops down all the way. There's no gap right here. And then the kit, it comes with two different sets of springs, kind of a standard and then a heavy duty. Kind of depends on your engine and what you're looking for. I mean, if you're just stunt riding and you just want more spring pressure. Um, the whole idea of the coil springs, it gives you better feel on the lever, better engagement, better disengagement, and it just, it, it just clamps down better. So kind of depending, um, I mean, light springs would probably be good to 100, 110 horsepower. Uh, the heavy springs might be good to like 125, 130. You can't really go by a number because all engines react differently, different RPM. So it's just kind of a basic guideline. Um, basically, you put the springs in over the standoffs. And one thing you can do with the since sensor, six of them, you can always stagger like a standard and then a heavy, standard heavy. But we're just going to put all six in for now. Um, from here, we supply six bolts and this little retainer ring. Put a little bit of Loctite on the threads on the bolts, just, just for safety. I mean, it's got spring pressure, but I, I usually Loctite everything. So you just kind of put them in there. I mean, everything more or less stays in there as long as the bike's standing straight up, nothing's gonna fall out. But uh, just get all six bolts started. Kind of go in a star, in a star pattern or crisscross or whatever. Just, you just don't want to go all the way down, all the way down. You want to crisscross because it's just a thin plate, so you're going to bend everything. So get them all started in here. Then you can grab your wrench and run them down. It's a little bit easier with a socket. And it's just a, it, this is a four millimeter socket. So everybody thinks it's uh, American because it's a Harley Davidson, but it's actually, these parts are metric. So use a four millimeter Allen socket or Allen wrench, whichever you might have. And like I said, you just want to kind of go across, get it down, get the bolts all in there until you start putting a little bit of pressure on the plate. And then you just want to start going crisscross, little star pattern or whatever, and just work its way down. So it's a thin metal plate, so you don't want to go too far because you will bend it and then it just becomes a pain. So go a few turns or whatever and then go to the next one and work your way back and forth. Just kind of be patient and don't get in a big hurry because you will bend it. Or if you try to go in too big of a hurry, you'll strip the head on the, on the bolts and then it's even more of a pain in the butt because then you gotta go find a new one or call us and order a new one. So once you get them all down, you'll feel them, they'll actually bottom out like that. Just leave it there and go across the next one, get it down. And then once, once you get all six of them snug down, you wanna grab your torque wrench and you want to torque them to uh, five, to five to six foot pounds. I mean, you want to put some pressure on it so you don't strip the bolt because it's just a little button head so they do strip fairly easily. So I'm not using a torque wrench. I just do this all the time so I kind of know the feeling, but we do recommend you torque them. So once you get them all torqued, you want to grab your little 732nd Allen wrench and 1116 socket or wrench or whatever you might have and adjust the push rod. I mean, we got a nice handy dandy little gym's tool that works really good. So I just, I like to run it in by hand and you can kind of feel the bottom out, run the nut down to where it just stops and then put the wrench on there, put your Allen wrench in there and just kind of get the feel for where you just, just turn it to where it just touches. 
we'll see if that wasn't down all the way. That way, you know, it just touches, run it in a little bit more. You'll actually see the pressure plate start moving. Then you know your ball and the ramp are all the way down to the bottom on the other side. So then back it off all the way so there's nothing there. Turn it in until it just touches. And then basically, same as the Harley book says, turn it off about half to three quarters of a turn. So when you got your just touching, back it off half a turn, leave the wrench in there, and then just tighten up the jam nut. Uh, torque on the nut, I think, is like 15 foot pounds or so. So you just want to good and snug, good and tight. And then once you got once you got your push rod adjusted right, you got all these bolts tight. You know everything's seated properly here. From here, you're gonna go back to your cable. So you get up to your cable. You want to make sure you're seated down all the way here. And basically, you're just gonna start running the adjuster up. So you can get rid of all that slop in there. And basically, rule of thumb, all the Harley guys always say between like a, a dime to a nickel as far as free play goes up top here on the lever. So it's kind of personal preference. I mean, you just you want to make sure you've got a little bit of a little bit of free play here. And then once you get that set right, you just come back, tighten up the gem nut. Slide your boot back over the adjuster. Keeps it all nice and clean. And then put your clamp back on there. Maybe work the clutch lever a couple times. You can watch it on the pressure plate and make sure everything's moving all nice and free. One thing to keep in mind too, when you pull your clutch lever in and you see your pressure plate move, sometimes it looks like it's kind of cocking a little bit. That's more or less normal because basically you've got a your quarter inch push rod pushing on a six inch aluminum pressure plate and it's just kind of cattywampus basically. So once the bike's running and everything's spinning nice and true, when you push out on it, it'll be nice and true. It's nothing to worry about. So once you got all this done here, from here you put your primary cover back on, put your oil in there, depending on what kind of clutch you're running, kind of depends on the oils and all that. I mean, our clutches, any oil from motorcycle wet clutch works perfect. So there's no issues there. Um, basically, once the primary cover is on, you put your derby cover back on, and there's no there's no fitment issues. It's a direct replacement, and from there you'll be good to go. And as always, you can always visit our website barnettclutches.com. Um, look at new products. I mean, you can we've got a little service center on there. Just, you can ask questions. The info at barnettcables.com. You can always call us if you need questions and need some answers on whatever. You're not sure about what products will work best for your bike. I mean, just feel free to give us a call, send us an email, and we'll get back to you. Thanks.